He's got his Polar Burger. We'll get into that. He's always also doing a very cool thing with his Homers for Heroes Foundation and giving away $1.5 million worth of tickets league-wide to local heroes in the Fantastic. COVID-19 pandemic. It's great stuff. Hey, Pete, it's Moose and Maggie. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thank you guys so much for, for having me on. No, no doubt. Well, we are happy to have you. And we're going to get into all that fun stuff in just a moment. But I, I'm going to try to recap this crazy week that the Mets have had. And I don't even know if I'm going to get everything in here. You get a you get a, base, a benches clearing sort of uh, situation in Philadelphia, the Jose Alvarado, Dom Smith. Uh, you take two out of three from the Phillies. Then we learn all about Diesel Donnie Stevenson, who's made a big appearance in this in this uh, on this team. You end up going to St. Louis. The lights go out during one of your at bats, which was just crazy. The hitting coaches unfortunately get fired. New hitting coaches get elevated. As I said, you guys go four and three on the road trip. You come home. Did I get everything that's happened in the last week for the Mets? Yeah. I, I think I think that covers it. I mean, what a week for uh, for New York media. <laughs> yeah, I guess thanks you know, for no. that. Where's Diesel Donnie right now? Can you fill us in on his whereabouts? Yeah, he's probably at the field right now getting some video reports ready for the boys. Well, no doubt. It's all about the video reports, right, Pete? The I, mean, coach. I, I thought, yeah, you know, you were pretty honest, Pete. I mean, you were very close. A lot of guys in that clubhouse were close with Chili. Um, and the, the uh, when he uh, when he was here as hitting coach, um, you know the, the balance for you. Um, love the comments earlier in the week in terms of the balance between analytics and what you need to, in order to be successful as a hitter. You know, Pete, you individually can't speak for any of your teammates. What do you need? I mean, do you think it's gotten a little bit out of whack? Do you think there is too much information? What do you need personally when you step into that batter's box to be you know the great power hitter that you are? I think having analytics is a is a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's a it's a double edged sword. But for me, I, I'd like to I want to be able to educate myself and speak the the quote unquote analytics language. And I that's what I did this off season. I want to be able to become as fluent as I possibly can, so I know what to use and what not to use. Because I think analytics are great regarding preparation, but when it comes game time. You have to believe in your preparation, and you gotta. You just got, have to go compete. So, um, but if you're thinking too hard on numbers and splits and certain zones or trying to hit it a certain way, it, the ball's the ball's going to get blown by me. So, and that's that's what I've kind of figured out from experience, for better or for worse. But I think that um, I, I feel like my approach right now to is is, is working extremely well. I've, I've been consistent. I've been making. Um, my outs have been loud when they're in play, and I feel like I'm a tough out. If um, if I don't put the ball in play, I put together a really good quality at bat. I've been seeing a ton of pitches, and I mean analytics. I mean they they're extremely helpful, but I feel like uh, if you get fire hosed with too much information, uh, you don't know what what is helpful and what's not. So I feel like being able to um, understand that is is the difficult part, and I really kind of dove into it this off season, but. Um, again, it's, it's, it's tough to, it's tough to figure out what's useful and what's not. And, and for me, I think that it's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, Pete, do you think, um, do you think Chile was providing you all the information you needed to be successful? Um, for me, uh, me personally, yeah. I mean, and me, me and him, uh, speak the same language. Um, I mean, he's, um, he's extremely helpful to me. I don't think I would have. Um, I don't think I would have had the success I've had in, in my first um, two years without him. And I, I think that in-game adjustments, because he gets it, he's an old-school player, and I feel like I'm I'm very reminiscent of the of the old-school type guys uh, that played in the league. But um, I mean, I, I'm I'm going to miss his input, but also he's a text or a phone call away, and he's always going to be a part of our our Mets family because. He's had a tremendous impact on all of our guys, but um, having a new perspective in uh, Hugh Quattlebaum and and uh, and Kev, I mean, both those guys they they provide different inputs, and and I think that having different different inputs and and a little bit different perspective can be productive. So I'm excited um, to to continue to work with uh, Kev and Q because um, both I I know. 
I know that a bunch of guys or a couple of the guys played with Kev in the minors and um and and have had a, a background with him. They no one speaks anything bad about him. People think he's a great guy in Q. Um I I know Q got to talk to him a little bit in spring training and um I mean both guys are are very high um very high IQ baseball guys. So they're yes they're different but I mean there's I mean, there's a lot. There could be a, a, a huge added benefit to that. Pete Alonzo is our guest. So I know it's only been a couple of days since you've had some new hitting coaches and maybe some new perspectives. Has there been any kind of different advice or approach that they've, you know, showed you so far that you've been able to kind of take from the the new hitting coaches? Well, I, I kind of want to see how the season is. Is, is kind of because um, for me I'm, I'm I'm going really well right now and they and they know that and if I have anything like important or um, or different that I want to kind of navigate through I'm willing to bounce information off of them but um, a part of what they've been doing is like all right like tell me what you're doing so I can uh, help pace and and upkeep what you got going on so I've been. I've been pretty pretty transparent with with my approach and how I've been having success. So, um, I mean, for me, I want I want to have things as simple as possible. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel at the dish. So, um, I mean, I, I've I've gotten their input. We have bounced back some uh, certain theories of the art of fitting, if you will, which is which is I think is a good thing. It's productive. But uh, regarding like changing or, or implementing anything new, like I. I think right now I'm in a really good place and I'm going to continue to be in a good place. So I, I think right now um, I'm going to say no soft. It's like, it's like a soft, <laughs> no, but we've, ex- soft it, no. It, but, but we've exchanged like a bunch of, uh, a bunch of information and perspectives, which is, which is awesome. And that's, and I think uh, ball talk is, is a great thing. You know, Pete, you hear it. I'm sure your manager last week used the term, his word, not mine, haunted the lineup with the situational hitting, uh, regardless of individual, um, where you guys got get you get guys on base, struggle to get those guys in. Do you think it, you know? Do you think you guys are quote unquote haunted by the struggles last year and how it's persisted into this year? Well, I think last. Year, I mean, if you look at if you look at the numbers last year, we're one of the best offenses in baseball. I don't think we're haunted. And then this year, I mean, it's. Um, I don't think it's haunted is the right word uh, because if you look at the start, like we're still, we, we played six to seven games less than every other team in the league. Like we had the COVID um, lockdown for like three days and we were stuck without playing any games. And then also on top of that, we've been stop and go uh, pretty much the entire month because of uh, pretty crappy weather. So, I mean, I don't think that haunted is the right word. I think that, we need to give ourselves grace because other teams, their pace and their season has been a lot different. Ours is has been very stop and start. It's been it's been pretty erratic to be honest with you. And, and baseball players, we're creatures of habit. We need consistency. And I don't to be honest, I don't think we've played seven games or, or seven days in a row because of schedule off days, weather, and COVID. And if you look at all the other teams, it's it's been a pretty pretty normal schedule. And I think with that. Um, it's, it's difficult because of expectations, um, media, this and that. But I think that um, we need to internally, like we just need to keep giving ourselves grace because um, you got some guys, um, key, pretty key players that are banged up right now. Like, um, And then we're waiting on uh, a couple guys uh, from the pitching staff to, to get healthy and, and join us. So if you look at all those components, I mean, uh, we're missing a few pieces. But to be where we're at right now and still be like right there at the top of the division, I think it's I think it's great um, how we've handled the adversity. So I don't think there's anything that we need to hit the panic button or, or think that we're haunted about. But I think that we just need to keep keep grinding, keep working hard, and, um, and we, which we've been doing. And I just think that everything once we I feel like once we seriously get in the flow and the meat of the season, uh, we're we're going to take off. We're talking with Pete Alonzo. We'll get to his burger, the cool things that he's doing uh, with his foundation in just one moment. But, you know, Pete, uh, your teammate Francisco Lindor snapped an 0 for 26. And I have to imagine there was a sense of relief there. Could you feel that from him? And also, 
Do you feel like this is maybe a little familiar after your breakout season, your rookie year? The expectations were massive last year. You get the disruptions for COVID, and you know I think that even you would admit last year maybe you were pressing a little bit because of the expectations. Can you kind of understand what Francisco Lindor is coming is going through with these massive expectations on being traded to New York and then obviously signing that big contract? Well, I mean, I, I think that going – whether you get a contract or not get a contract and regardless of any season going over over 20 something i mean that's that's not fun yeah. i mean let's <laughs> to put it bluntly it's it's not fun i mean i've i've done it and i guarantee you if for the rest of my career it's going to happen like if i i'm i'm going to go on one of those i'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow or today or but it, it's tough like there's certain parts of the season where it's a grind and you feel like, and you feel that, oh man, like it's, I, I've been there. I was there in 2019. I mean, people kind of forget that I was, I, I was after the all-star break, I, um, after the first couple games, I kind of went into a rut and, but because of, if you look back, it's like, oh, like people remember the 53 homers and 120 RBIs and the record and this and that, but people forget the, um, the times of struggle when you look back at the end of the year during a successful campaign. So, for Francisco, like it's this is, I know it seems like a big deal. I know it seemed like the weight of the world was on his shoulders, but in reality, when 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 he hits thirty homers and hits close to three hundred and drives in close to a hundred guys this year, like he's like we're all going to kind of laugh about this because, I mean, he's he's a superstar, and every it doesn't matter who you are in the game of baseball, you're gonna like you're gonna struggle. It's inevitable. It's a game of failure. You know, Pete, I want to ask you about Rojas. What do you think separates him as a manager? I mean, he's Louie, he, 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 he always has players back. And also, he's super calm, cool, and collected when he has to make those difficult decisions during a game. I mean, I've never managed a baseball game before. I've never, I mean, even even when my younger brother was playing Little League, like, I, I never had the pressure of being the manager <laughs> or, or being the head right. coach. Like, I don't especially at the big league level. I don't know what it's like. I mean, that, that's that got to be – I can't even imagine. I mean, it's a lot of pressure playing, but um, there's a there's even more as, as a manager. And I think that for him, he's been doing an absolutely great job for um, – I mean, regarding, like, the adversity that I mentioned before. So, I mean, he's been, he's been doing great, and I, we just need to keep playing ball. And hopefully the weather – hopefully the weather holds up and um, we keep – we keep uh, keep playing good ball, and I think that with uh, playing consistently, you're going to see our team take off. A couple more minutes here with Pete Alonzo, and Pete, we're so appreciative of your time, and we're going to get to the Polar Burger in a moment, but I want to ask you another food-related question because I read in the New York Post that you and a couple other baseball play- Mets players actually went to dinner at Steve Cohen's house. Is that true? Yes. Okay, so you guys had had dinner at the owners. I'm assuming this has got to be a pretty cool mansion. You know, he's got a great art collection. I want to ask you a couple questions about this. So, like, what can you tell us? Like, when a billionaire has you over for dinner, what do they serve? Well, I mean, it was um, it was extremely nice gesture for him um, to um, to have us over, and it was it was a really productive conversation, really exciting conversation because. Um, uh, throughout the night, because Alex um, Alex Cohen, she's um, spearheading um, pretty much everything with the Mets Foundation, and uh, we got to we got to bounce some ideas off what we can do to um, to do some to do some good, you know. And I was really excited about that, and uh, Steve was super pumped up to um, to kind of have us over and kind of um, just pretty much just say like hey listen we're really excited and um it's it's awesome just to get to know uh get to know you so i'm really i'm really excited to that he was able to offer but food it was great um i mean he he had steak and and sides and stuff like that so it was good he served steak i'm 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 always gonna be happy steak's my favorite food (laughs) Pete, for a man that has everything, do you bring like a bottle of wine as a nice gesture do you do you do anything or do you just show up well i i um I 
I kind of stereotyped because I figured uh, finance guys uh, are Scotch guys, so I I <laughs> I, uh, I I brought him a bottle of Scotch. <laughs> Granted, he can nice. buy it. I just wanted to show like a a nice gesture, but um, yeah, it's great. No, it's, it's that's polite. That's the right thing to do. Someone yeah, invites you over, then, whether they're a billionaire or not. You got to bring something. Can't be empty-handed. Yeah, so we brought uh, brought um, me and my fiance. We bought um, we we got him some whiskey and wine. Very nice. good. Very, Very nice. Good. Okay, so cool. now we got the Polar Burger, right? This is going to be a cool thing. You get your own signature burger. It's got everything on it. But I'm just curious, like, how many iterations did you go through before you landed on this particular burger? Or were you like, I have envisioned this in my head for years. If I ever have my own burger, this is what's going to be on it. Tell us about the process. So I, I bounced back a, a couple ideas with Chef, and he um, – and, and he he made a couple suggestions, but I and he basically are um, we started the process back in spring training with like ingredients and stuff like that. Um, but the the coolest thing about it is that all these ingredients are locally sourced in in New York State, whether it be in uh, whether it be in Brooklyn or from an uh, from an like an Amish farm like upstate New York. Like everything here is. Um, everything in that burger, all the ingredients are locally sourced, which I'm super happy about because COVID kind of hit um, a lot of a lot of these local businesses really really hard. So to be able to support and give back, or to be able to support um, local New York companies, um, which is uh, I'm super excited about. But ingredients, um, it's all I'm, because it's locally sourced. It's great to support local, um, not just for the the whole financial thing and, and getting people back on track but because local ingredients and fresh ingredients i mean they just taste the best i mean yeah. it's there's yeah, no yeah. getting around it so fresh ingredients always equal a, a high quality product when it comes to food and so pete, i'm really excited and um i i don't think people are gonna like it i know people are gonna like it <laughs> well i mean it's how confident. could you not with the ingredients on it i mean I, I loved your line you don't know if the mets nutritionist will allow you to eat it but uh <laughs> I mean, it is it is a hell of a burger. What about tell us also, Pete, uh, about what you're working with the uh, you and your fiance Haley with Homers for Heroes Foundation in connection with Major League Baseball. You know, the 1.5 million dollars uh, worth of tickets league wide to help local heroes affected by COVID nineteen. Yeah, and and there's so many there's so many people that um, that were impacted and, and deserve to have a, a fun day at the fun day at the yards, and also it's. To be able to to be able to do that, it's it's really an honor, and I'm I'm really excited to be a part of this initiative because, um, I mean, it's been it's been really really tough. These, uh, I mean, and now we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel with more and more people getting vaccinated and, and cases going down. So it's really excited to get people out to the yard because, um, I mean, you know, it's about time. It's about time people can can celebrate and do something and and do something and, and be able to get out there again and. I'm just really excited because it's it's really uh I as as the days go by we're getting closer and closer so I'm really excited and and in order to celebrate that and to help and to honor those people who have done an incredible job um, saving lives I mean it, it's it's going to be awesome having them out to the yard having them out to the ballpark and uh, get to show them a really good time and a fun time. Oh, fantastic. And even when the pandemic hit and you were like surprising the healthcare workers at the beginning, oh, which is like, hey, it's Pete Alonzo. Like that was really amazing and like emotional for so many. OK, we're going to finish this out, Pete, with something really fun. We're calling it the lightning round. It's going to be one minute. We're going to try to get as many questions as we possibly can. So we got some music. We got a buzzer, a timer. We've got something. One minute of questions with Pete Alonzo. And this is where it's going to start. Your perfect ballpark meal is what, Pete? Burger and a beer. Okay, burger. Favorite non-Met mascot? Brutus the Buckeye. Who is the biggest challenger to you in the weight room? Nobody. Favorite Disney character? I don't like Disney. Who is the toughest starter to hit? Not a, a opponent, obviously, not a teammate. Wait, an opponent or non-opponent? An opponent. Oh, an opponent. Um, I gotta say, Scherzer. Who? Is, what is your favorite dessert? <sighs> All of them. <laughs> Who is the most chatty person at first base? Uh, also, an opponent. 
I'm going to say Freddie. Freddie Freeman's pretty chatty. Favorite baseball player growing up? Mike Piazza. Oh, uh, I had one more. It was who knows more baseball, Steve Cohen or Alex Cohen? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Say both. Uh, Say uh, both there. <laughs> Pete, fantastic. We appreciate it. Um, uh, good luck on the homestand here with Arizona tonight, and uh, great work with the Bear uh, with your new burger out at City Field and also with everything that you're doing with Homers for Heroes Foundation. Fantastic. Uh, and we appreciate the time. Oh, of course. Guys, LFGM. <laughs> there we go. There you go. LFGM. 